President-elect Biden is facing increased pressure from civil rights groups to nominate people of color to top cabinet posts. Mr. Biden met with civil rights leaders Tuesday to discuss the incoming administration's priorities on racial justice and diversity. Mark Morial was in that meeting. He's the president and CEO of the National Urban League and is the husband of CBS's Michelle Miller. Mark, welcome. Great to have you with us. Hey, Tyler. Um, Thank you. As we said earlier... <laughs> Great to have you. As we said earlier, you and other black leaders met with the president and vice president-elect. What was your takeaway from that meeting, and do you feel they were receptive to your ideas? So thank you for having me today. And importantly, we pressed the need for there to be diversity in the cabinet, the sub-cabinet, along with all uh, White House positions. Uh, I felt that uh, the president-elect and the vice president-elect heard us. Uh, it's notable that uh, as we opened the meeting, uh, General Lloyd Austin was being appointed as Secretary of Defense. As we closed the meeting, Congresswoman Marsha Fudge was being named Secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Those are two positive developments on this journey uh, to a diversified cabinet. And you Hello? and the other participants in the meeting. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Mark, you and the other participants in the meeting made it clear to President-elect Biden that you do want him to select an attorney general with a civil rights background. You told NPR that picking an African-American for that role would be a strong way for the Justice Department to reclaim its role. Can you explain what exactly you mean by this? So, in the last four years, the Justice Department has retrenched dramatically under Bill Sessions and uh, Bill Barr. Jeff Sessions and, and Bill Barr, they've retrenched dramatically in their obligation to enforce civil rights laws. They've shut down bringing any voting cases, even as voter intimidation and voter suppression raged. Uh, they shut down investigating pattern and practice uh, violations by municipal police departments when constitutional rights were in, in, uh, affected. Uh, they've effectively uh, put a uh, not no longer open for business sign on the civil rights division. And as such, the moral weight, the constitutional obligation to pursue justice in this Amer in, in the United States has been shirked by the current Justice Department. The next attorney general has got a cleanup job. They're going to have to clean up a mess. They're going to have to revive, if you will, the energy and the commitment that I know career lawyers have to the enforcement of civil rights laws. So, an African-American attorney general who both has the lived experiences, the empathy, uh, and the sympathy, and the understanding of the challenges of racial justice, along with the legal acumen and the professional qualifications, I think would be ideal. We all think about Attorney General Holder, who did an outstanding job and, and is a bit of a role model for the kind of attorney general we'd like to see. And we were just speaking about Marsha Fudge. I'd like to go back to her. You know, as we discussed, President-elect Biden has tapped the Ohio Congresswoman to be the next Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. But there was a push to see her in a different cabinet position. What are your thoughts on that selection? Well, she would have been a great Secretary of Agriculture. Uh, she's a, a talented leader, a person who has paid her dues who's been an effective member of Congress, she could do many cabinet jobs. Uh, I am excited about the prospect of working with her as secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And once again, Tanya, you've got a department that's been an underperformer, that to some extent uh, has been sleeping uh, in the midst of a housing crisis in the United States, and it needs a shot in the arm. It needs new leadership. And again, I think the career employees at the Department of Housing and Urban Development are going to cheer the day Marsha Fudge walks through the door. No doubt she has an uphill task ahead of her there, but uh, she's certainly up for the job. Mark, the black community has been looking for equality on racial and economic issues for years. Where do you believe previous administrations have failed in fixing these issues? And what do you believe the incoming Biden administration can do better? 
So let's talk about the incoming Biden administration. Uh, this presidency has been born in a year where racial disparities and racial justice have been in the headlines, where we saw millions of people take to the streets in the aftermath of George Floyd being killed on the streets in Minneapolis, where the ravages of COVID have had a disparate impact on black communities and communities of color. That's the crucible within which this election was held. Uh, this president and this vice president have already lifted up a commitment to racial justice as one of their four guiding principles. Our role as civil rights leaders is to hold them accountable and to help them accomplish those goals for the nation. So it's going to mean an attack on the racial wealth gap. It's going to mean lifting up uh, the need for a new Voting Rights Act. It's going to mean, if you will, focusing on criminal justice reform, educational equity, and that the COVID vaccine distribution system be fair, be equitable, be broad, and reach everyone. So, Mark, I want to pivot over to the coronavirus for a moment. Dr. Anthony mm -hmm. Fauci says black Americans should feel safe taking the coronavirus vaccine. The black community's distrust of the American medical establishment, though, is often traced back to a real history of mistreatment. So as a leader of the community, what do you have to say to black Americans who might not feel comfortable taking this vaccine? So I think, first of all, with great respect for Dr. Fauci, it will require more than Dr. Fauci saying you should feel safe. I think what's needed is an effort to provide people in the community with basic information about the process through which the vaccine was developed in a rapid period of time, a bit of an understanding of what the side effects may be of a vaccine and what the efficacy uh, quotient is for the vaccine. We have to empower people to make their own decision. We can't force it. We can't push it. Certainly, it can be strongly encouraged. The long history of distrust is deep, it's significant, and it's got to be acknowledged. While at the same time, I think one of the most important approaches is what we're doing at the National Urban League. We've engaged uh, with African-American medical professionals and scientists. They're the deans of the four black medical schools. They're the leaders of the National Medical Association. They're part of a, an organization called blackdoctors.org. And together, uh, we're actually hosting a virtual town hall tomorrow night so that the community can have an open, robust, candid discussion about COVID and the vaccine process. Let's empower people with information. Let's share with them how the clinical trials process took place and whether it was diverse or not. Let's be clear about the effect of the vaccine, the side effects of the vaccine. I'm confident that if people have information, if that information is shared with them with respect and acknowledgement of the pain of the past, uh, I think we can get a positive result with the vaccine. But it can't be pushed. It can't be forced. People can't be shamed into this. Uh, we are committed to trying to ensure that people have the information they need from messengers that they believe in, uh, in a context that allows them to make an informed, intelligent decision on their own. I've encouraged mm -hmm. people who have questions to seek out the wisdom and the counsel of their own primary care physician, their own doctor. This is a personal choice, but it also affects the community. Mm -hmm. So I feel that we can achieve progress in this area, but it's going to take hard work. And you're right. The correct delivery of the message is crucial. Mark Morial, National Urban League president and CEO, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Tanya.